Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Civilization of Agartha Until very recently, people all over the world were convinced the Earth was hollow. People everywhere believed in a hollow Earth long after they had already agreed the Earth was round. The idea was that the surface world was nothing but an outer shell, and underneath that shell was a vast world with its own atmosphere, its own geological wonders, and its own civilization. This civilization was called Agartha, and it wasn't just a scientific theory, but an accepted fact. When the concept was proposed in the 17th century by scientist Edmund Halley, it caught on immediately. People began to believe the planet was made of multiple shells, with each one separated by its own individual atmosphere. Each shell supposedly worked independently of the other, and had its own unique people and life forms. The theory of the hollow Earth was expanded upon for centuries. As recently as World War II, the Nazis allegedly searched for the entrance to the hollow world, believing the civilization of Agartha possessed technology that could help them win the war. German U-boat navigator Carl Unger even claimed that he saw the entrance himself and could confirm the Earth was indeed hollow. Sort of sadly, almost everything about Agartha these days is considered a conspiracy theory. Mainstream scientists say the Earth is a solid mass with a liquid molten core, while others believe that's totally false. Number 9. Mount Shasta In Northern California, there is a snow-capped volcano named Mount Shasta. It's at the very edge of the Cascade Mountain Range, which comes down in waves of rocky peaks from British Columbia, Washington, and Oregon. But this volcano is unlike any of the mountains in the Pacific Northwest. It's filled with secrets that scientists can't and perhaps will never understand. The mountain draws in about 26,000 visitors each year. The tourists flood the small town at the foot of the mountain and spend heaps of cash at crystal shops and bookstores. It's kind of a hub for those looking to gain a deeper appreciation for the planet and its energies. What really draws these tourists in is the rumor that hidden within the mountain volcano is a secret crystal city, one that the ancient Native Americans knew about before the Europeans came. There are also rumors that the volcano stands on one of the most powerful ley lines in the world, creating an energetic vortex that spiritualists can feed on. The mysterious crystal city is called Telos, and it was first described in 1864 by the zoologist Philip Sclater. He believed a continent called Lemuria sank beneath the Indian Ocean thousands of years ago. Then, after the continent sank, its 25,000 surviving souls fled to Mount Shasta. They then built a grand city in the heart of the mountain, like a group of dwarves, and allegedly, they continue to live there in total isolation. None of this has ever been confirmed by modern scientists, but the fact is, people still believe there is a society in the mountain, even if nobody can prove it. Number 8. The Hanging Monastery The Hanging Monastery of Mount Heng is a fascinating and peculiar place in China. The mountain itself is considered a powerful and sacred place, one of the five great mountains of China. The Hanging Monastery is a testimony to the ingenuity of the monks who lived here for centuries. It was built in 491 AD, constructed against a sheer wall of solid rock as if by a miracle, and it's still standing 1,500 years later. Because the monastery was built so long ago, no one knows exactly who started it. Legend has it a monk named Liao Ran began construction alone. Slowly but surely, more monks arrived on the mountain to help build, as they all wished to be isolated from the world in a place almost impossible to reach. The site was perfect for those who wanted to practice meditation. Because of its lofty height, noises from the ground couldn't be heard. In addition to the peace and quiet, its height ensured that the monastery was safe from floods. The mountain's peaks worked as a shelter to protect the monks from rain, snow, and the harsh sun. This is one of the main reasons for the monastery's continual existence over the years. But even though this place looks like it was built using magic, experts say it wasn't. 
Most likely, the monks used highly advanced engineering methods. They drilled holes into the rock, then slipped in wooden pillars. These wooden pillars acted as supports for the structure. However, there are myths that the pillars were installed later to give tourists a sense of safety and that the monastery really is held against the wall as if by magic. Number 7. India's Giant Jars Researchers in India recently came across four separate fields covered in gigantic stone jars. All four of these mysterious sites were found in the state of Assam, with a total of 65 sandstone jars spread between them. Archaeologists haven't been able to date these relics yet, but believe they were made prior to 401 BC. That's over 2,400 years ago. The discovery was made during a 2020 survey of the area. The research team went into a remote part of the jungle that had yet to be formally surveyed, a place where no people live and where nobody had really gone before. It was as they searched through the jungle for anything interesting that they started finding random jars. The jars were found sticking up from the ground and completely overgrown with weeds and vines. Some of them are 10 feet tall and almost 7 feet wide. They also look very similar to the strange stone jars found in Laos and Indonesia. The only thing is that these sites in India are thousands of miles away from the ones in Southeast Asia. To make things even more bizarre, the team has already discovered decayed human remains inside several of the giant jars. This suggests they were used for burial rituals although scientists don't know for sure. There are no written accounts of giant jars being used ceremoniously, so their presence in the jungle is still a mystery. And now for number 6, but first want to give a quick shout out to Chef Green Thumb and Ivy Merritt. Thanks so much for watching and supporting Origins Explained. If you are new here, welcome! And be sure to subscribe for more videos about mysterious discoveries and archaeology. Number 6. Tito Bustillo Cave The Tito Bustillo Cave is one of the most mystifying places in Spain. It was discovered in 1968 by a group of cavers equipped with nothing but spelunking gear. They dropped down into a cavern along the northern coast just a few miles from other famous Spanish caves like Altamira and El Castillo. As they descended into the darkness of the subterranean pit, they quickly started to see paintings all over the walls. Even though these cavers weren't archaeologists, they knew immediately they had stumbled upon something ancient and great. We now know that the paintings in this cave are among the earliest examples of human art in Europe. The cave is 1600 feet long, connected through passageways and large vaulted chambers, and it's filled with some of the first pieces of artwork ever created by human beings. Sure, there are older pieces of artwork in Spain from 65,000 years ago, but those were created by Neanderthals. After the Neanderthals were wiped out 40,000 years ago, Homo sapiens were the only ones left to draw on cave walls. Our earliest attempts at art can be found right here in the Tito Bustillo cave, with the paintings dating back 36,000 years. But there's still a lot that scientists don't understand about the cave and its paintings. The artwork depicts mostly animals, large numbers of deer and reindeer and horses, but there are also strange and unidentified animals, things nobody has ever been able to make sense of. There are mysterious geometric lines and patterns too, which are also kind of strange. We don't know if these early humans saw animals that no longer exist or if they were making up creatures from their own imaginations. Number 5. Crystal River Florida's Crystal River Archaeological State Park is a place of great history and deep mysteries. It's considered one of the longest continually occupied places in Florida and served as a ceremonial center for Native Americans for nearly 2,000 years. The people who lived here were coastal dwellers. They settled the Crystal River about 10,000 years ago and lived in small bands of nomadic hunters and gatherers. Historians call these people Paleo-Indians. They traveled from place to place forever foraging and hunting. Typically, these groups were made of extended family members, brought together in a clan, and related almost entirely by blood. But then something strange happened. 
Eight thousand years ago, the sea began to rise and the weather began to change. Mammoths and other ice age beasts started going extinct. At the same time, humans were rapidly undergoing technological advancements. Along the Crystal River, there was a civilization of fisher folk starting 2,500 years ago. They lived there all year, but scientists aren't entirely sure what it was they were doing. Today, the site is covered in huge earthen mounds. These mounds were where the inhabitants conducted cultural festivals, ritual ceremonies, and where they buried their dead. There are roughly 1,500 skeletons scattered throughout the archaeological site. But here's the craziest part. Evidence has shown that people made pilgrimage to the Crystal River complex from all over America. Native Americans traveled immense distances specifically to bury their dead under these earthen mounds. It's been estimated that about 7,500 visitors arrived at the complex each year. Then, around the year 1500, everyone packed up and left. But scientists don't know why. Number 4. The Cave Roads of Tuscany The Cave Roads of Tuscany were left behind by the Etruscans 800 years before the birth of Christ, maybe even longer. The Cave Roads are mysterious pathways that were cut through hard stone using primitive hand tools, nearly a mile high in some places. The stone is a type of solidified ash from volcanic eruptions called tuff, so it was a little easier than just cutting through solid rock. Still, the Etruscans lived in central Italy 3,000 years ago, before the Roman Empire. It wasn't as if they had access to modern technology to tunnel through stone. This was an impressive feat of engineering, a building project that would have taken a lot of coordination and cooperation. Scientists have no doubt the Etruscans completed the project using primitive chisels and hammers. What they don't understand is why the Etruscans went through all the effort. They made these curving pathways all throughout Tuscany, spread like spiderwebs or ant tunnels. They go through the small Italian towns of Pitigliano, Sovana, and Sorano. Some of the roads contain their own shrines meant to protect travelers from evil spirits. There are even ancient tombs situated alongside some of the cave roads. But just what was the purpose of such a strange and enormous undertaking? There are a few different theories. Some say the roads could have been used as an escape in case of an invading army. Some say they were sacred ceremonial paths leading to religious sites. Others believe they were merely roads to connect settlements, making trade easier and keeping merchants safe from bandits. Number 3. Mysterious Neolithic Roundel Archaeologists in the Czech Republic have just announced the discovery of an incredible Neolithic structure even older than Stonehenge. It's called a roundel, and it's 7,000 years old. Scientists are at a loss. They can't figure this place out because the purpose of the structure continues to elude them. According to researchers from the Institute of Archaeology of the Czech Academy of Sciences, Roundels are the oldest evidence of architecture in Europe. There are 200 of them across the continent, with 35 in the Czech Republic. Even though scientists have studied so many of these prehistoric structures, they still don't understand their purpose. Let's focus on this newest discovery, which was constructed around 4,900 BC. In comparison, Stonehenge was built over 1,000 years later in 3100 BC, and the Egyptian pyramids even later in 2600 BC. It's believed the roundel structure was built by a group of early humans known as the Stroked Pottery Culture. They were early farmers in Central Europe who reached their peak between 4900 and 4400 BC. The structure itself is 180 feet in diameter with its walls about as tall as the Leaning Tower of Pisa before they were destroyed. The roundel was circular, almost like a huge open pit, but it was built at a time before tools. This is the Stone Age we're talking about, long before iron, when humans only had access to sharp stones and animal bones. Building such an enclosure with tall walls would have been impressive for the time. Researchers believe the roundel could have been an early trade center 
or even a place where a prehistoric cult performed strange rites of passage and rituals. Number 2. The Beehive Tomb of Tiryns The ancient citadel of Tiryns was a mystical place even 2,000 years ago. The Greeks believed the city was originally built by Proetos, the grandfather of legendary hero Perseus, and the supposed founder of the city of Mycenae. Proetos allegedly built the city in 1600 BC, long before it was deserted around the year zero and the rise of Christianity. While the city has always been steeped in myth, there is one place in particular that scientists are still investigating. In 1913, a beehive-shaped structure known as a Tholos tomb was discovered here. It was found about half a mile underneath the citadel. The ancient tomb is about 10 feet wide and 42 feet long. It's amazing because the roof is steeply pitched and decorated to make it look just like a beehive. The mystery is that even though the tomb was found in perfect condition, there was nothing inside of it, at least nothing good. There were a few pot shards and a single stone altar with a square indentation. Nobody knows what the altar is for. No sarcophagi or corpses were ever found inside. And it was built about 3,400 years ago. Researchers believe the tomb was made for an ancient hero, but no one knows who that hero may have been. Number 1. Mara Wonga The Mara Wonga site in Australia is home to 15,000 pieces of rock art. They stretch across 400 feet of sandstone and were created over many thousands of years. What's truly strange about these particular pieces of art is that they tell a single cohesive story. Some of the petroglyphs here are in the form of animal tracks and geometric shapes, but mostly there are detailed engravings of the Seven Sisters, a group of seven stars in the sky known as the Pleiades constellation. This is a baffling coincidence for archaeologists to try to understand. The Seven Sisters narrative is something that can be seen in many different cultures across the world. The Greeks had their own stories about the Seven Sisters, the seven stars in the Pleiades constellation, and so did the Aboriginal Australians on the other side of the world. This is bizarre because two cultures that never met came up with the same stories. The Marawanga site is filled with petroglyphs with most designs being 5,000 years old. We can see how the seven sisters are chased across the sky by the man who was in love with them. Researchers still have no idea how the Australians and the Greeks, among other ancient cultures, all came up with almost identical stories. Thanks for watching! What are your thoughts on the shocking rock art of Marawanga? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. See you next time! Bye!